Earlier this week, Queen's Park officially recognized April 16th as Equal Pay Day to raise awareness of the wage gap between men and women. What actions will the government take to narrow that gap? Let's find out. Joining us now to help answer that question, Teresa Peruzza. She is the Minister of Children and Youth Services and the Minister responsible for women's issues for the Government of Ontario and the MPP for Windsor West, and we're happy to have you in the studio for the first time. And it's my pleasure to be here. Thank you. How wide is the gap? How wide is the gap? There are many different ways of measuring the, uh, the, the, the gender wage gap, as, as you mentioned, in terms of the Equal Pay Day. So we recognized the Equal Pay Day yesterday. That was the day that uh, was kind of recommended in terms of the, of the days. And depending on how we measure that, it's annual or hourly, or there are so many different ways. We don't, we're not uh, recognizing one particular wage gap. The very fact that a gap still exists suggests that we have more work to do. Does the gap exist when men and women have the same qualifications and do the same work? You know, I think in some areas that, that may. Uh, we certainly have the Pay Equity Act and, and other Employment Standards Act and labor legislation to ensure that we don't have that. Could there be some circumstances where that may occur? There may. I don't know that that's, that's not the wider systemic issue that we're looking at. We're really looking at what is that gender wage gap and, and why does that exist and what can we do in terms of, of making that gap smaller. And, and we do that through the various commitments, the various investments that, that we've done over the last number of years in education and skills training and, and child care. These are all investments that that assist women in terms of being able to have the skills, to gain opportunities, and to be able to really succeed and to be able to be, uh, be, uh, uh, enable them to use their full skills and abilities. You've heard this before, but let me put these arguments to you and you tell me you know, what you think the facts say on them. A lot of people argue that the wage gap is in place largely because of choices that women make. They choose to leave the workforce to have children, and or they choose to work part-time, or they choose a more sensible work-life balance, and therefore, over time, add all these things up, you end up with a wage gap in place. Any of that true? Well, I, I disagree that the gender wage gap is, is through women's choice. Certainly women have choices and make choices in terms of working part-time or full-time. Um, however, the, uh, the, the fact is, is that many of the jobs that women are in are based part-time. So if they, they choose the jobs. But that's not the element that we're looking at. We're really looking at what are some of the other complex issues that, that fall into play here. Like what? So whether we have, for example, in terms of uh, women still taking on more of the burden at home in terms of child care. So there was recently a Statistics Canada study that showed that women, for example, per, per week put in 50 hours of work at home, unpaid work, compared to 24 hours of, that, of men in they, terms of work at the, home. The preponderance of that second shift falls on well, women, doesn't it? Well, it still does. So there's still dis uh, systemic discrimination. When I go out and speak to, to women in different roundtables that we've been having uh, since I've become the minister responsible for women's issue, women shouldn't need to feel that choices that they're making are having these unintended negative consequences. Mm -hmm. Women shouldn't feel that because they're a mother that it's going to have a negative impact on either their profession or their salaries or how they're valued. So ultimately when we recognize Equal Pay Day, we're recognizing the importance of, of women's work in our economy. We're really raising awareness of that gender wage gap and recognizing that there is still more work that we need to do to, to, uh, to flatten that gap. What's the significance of recognizing a particular day on the calendar as Equal Pay Day? Well, it's like uh, other days that we recognize as well, and it's really about increasing awareness, starting discussions, starting conversations with individuals across Ontario. Ontario is the first jurisdiction in Canada that has recognized Equal Pay Day, so it certainly speaks to our commitment in terms of raising the awareness, recognizing that there is still a gender wage gap, and that we all need to work together with this. This is a it's a complex issue that it's not simply it's not 
public policy alone that will be able to resolve this issue. We need all levels of government. We need our community organizations, our communities, our employers. We need everyone at the table together to really be able to continue to bridge that gap. Is it the same kind of thing, though, where I know some of your conservative friends have something called uh, Tax Freedom Day, where after a certain day on the calendar, you are, quote, unquote, working for yourself as opposed to working for government is mm -hmm. the way they put it. Does this date on the calendar have the same kind of significance? Well, the Equal Wage Day was the day that was suggested to us that, that does um, indicate how many days extra in a year a woman has to work to, to be up to the same average annual salary of a, of a man. So you're counting from January to from the middle January of April? January 1st to April 16th, right? That many days before, extra. That many days. So again, recognizing the day and raising awareness to what that day is and the, and the importance of, of that day is to say, that day should be January 1st. We have work to do, and, and we all have to work together. Um, as when I became minister responsible for women's issues, I undertook to, to, to um, have a number of roundtable discussions around the province with different groups to say, okay, so the Ontario Women's Directorate is 30 years old. Mm. Our theme for, the, for our anniversary was celebrate, remember, and look forward. Celebrate how far we've come remember the work that that has been done over the last 30 years but where do we need to be going forward over the next 30 years where are the issues and what do we need to do so we've taken those concrete actions as i indicated well, earlier yeah, in terms they? of well let's let's talk about our investments in child care you know increasing the the investments in our child care um, to over a billion dollars over, over the last number of years, so our investments in full-day forward. kindergarten. Well, that what that it, that allows is a woman to know, for a family to know that their children are cared for when you have the spaces, when you have full-day kindergarten, which allows them to either go to training or go to work. There's the investments um, in training that, that we do. We have a number of programs that provide training for women in skilled trades, for example, or women in, uh, in IT, and really to provide them with those opportunities to learn skills that may move them into different types of, of positions. You know, when, when half the population is women, half the workforce is women, our post-secondary graduates are women, we really need to ensure that all are all women starting in starting in grade school and in, in grade school and high school recognize that they have choices that they have opportunities and to ensure that we provide them with those opportunities so education training child care full day kindergarten okay that's um, what has been done but as you and presumably right. if we were to reconvene next year at this time it might not be in the middle of april it might be a little earlier in the calendar which is what you want right. Looking forward, what still has to happen? Well, and those are the discussions that we're having, because as we say, okay, we've, we've made these investments, what do we need to do moving forward? And What's on that list? And what, and what we're hearing, again, is, is the need to start speaking to girls earlier than the end of high school in terms of what some of the choices and opportunities are in terms of, of different, uh, different careers or different professions, and speaking to them in grade school. It's about uh, work-life balance and asking employers for flexibilities in the workplace. If I'm a mom, I, I shouldn't need to feel guilty if I need to run home for something or pick up my child, right? So it's that flexibility in the workplace as well. It's speaking to employers or, or having employers have that or allow that work-life balance that, that, uh, that families need as well. So we're hearing a lot about work-life balance, we're hearing a lot about flexible work arrangements, and I mean, the other element or commitment that certainly we just recently made was the increase in the minimum wage and the legislation that's bring, being brought forward to, to tie that to the CPI. So that's an element that's been brought forward as well. So just finally, if we had this conversation, let's say 25 years ago, we might have had it in the middle of July, let's say. Uh, so the arrow is moving in the right direction, but how many years do you think it'll take before we have this conversation on the 1st of January, as you suggested? Well, you know, that's, that's a measure that, that, we can't, that, I, that we can't determine about how long that might take because, again, a number, uh, a, a number of elements is really outside our control in terms of society, societal 
norms or any type of systemic discrimination that, that may be occurring as well. So it's, it's families having those discussions with their girls, their daughters, it's employers changing, their, changing some of their work arrangements as well. Can I say how long it's going to take? shorter than longer, but certainly it's, a, it's an area that we remain committed to working with our community organizations, to listening to recommendations, and to making the changes that, that we can as government at the provincial level, recognizing again that we really need that discussion of bringing everyone around the table and everyone having a piece of this. This isn't a women's issue. This is an economics issue and a society's issue. When you have half the workforce of women, you want to ensure that women are certainly working at their fullest, being able to really earn as much as men and provide all those opportunities to allow that to happen. Minister Peruzza, we thank you for coming into TVO tonight and sharing your views on this. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Support Ontario's public television. Donate at TVO.org.